In this recording, we shall look at graphing polynomial functions that can be factorised into linear factors. So a linear factor has form ax plus b and a polynomial that could be factorised into a series of such linear factors would have form y equal to constant k times the first linear factor a1x plus b1 to some positive integer power m1 and then a series of other factors as shown. And one way of getting a decent approximate sketch of such a function is to find the x-intercepts and y-intercepts and to understand how the graph will behave about the x-intercepts. Now the y-intercept of a graph, that is always where the graph cuts the y-axis. That is, it is a value of y when x equals 0. And if we substitute x equals 0 into our expression here, You'll notice that a1x will become 0, same thing through to anx becoming 0, which will leave us just with k times constant b1 to the power of m1, constant b2 times to the power of m2, through to constant bn to the power of mn, as these bits here will become 0 when working out the y-intercept. So what about finding x-intercepts? Well, we can work out the x-intercepts in terms of when y equals 0. And in order to get y equals 0, since each of these factors of form aix plus bi to the mi are multiplied, if any given one of those factors equals 0, it will make y equals 0. So therefore, there is an x-intercept in each case for aix plus bi equals 0. But rather than just knowing that that's where the graph cuts the x-axis, another question is will the graph just pass straight through the x-axis or will there be a turning point there? And that depends on whether the powers here, m1, m2 through to mn, are odd or even in each case. And if one of those powers is odd, then the graph will actually just cut through the x-axis, like this, for instance, or like that. So, for example, if you had aix plus bi to the power of 1 or to the power of 3, that's what would happen. By contrast, if one of the, or more of those factors are raised to an even power, mi, then what will actually happen is there will be a turning point at the x-intercept. So it could look like that, or like that, for instance. So that if you had aix plus bi to the power of 2, for instance, that would happen. So let's reinforce these ideas further with a few examples. First, let's look at sketching the graph of y equals 3 times x plus 1 times x minus 2 squared. So first thing we could do is find the y-intercept just abbreviate that as y int here, and we said that that's when x equals 0. So therefore, that is going to give y is equal to 3, which is like our constant k, times 0 plus 1, which is just 1, times 0 minus 2 squared, giving negative 2 squared. So that just works out to give a y-intercept of 12. Now let's look at each of the factors in turn to get x-intercepts. And our first factor here is x plus 1. And that's just to the power of 1. So there'll be an x-intercept when that factor x plus 1 gives 0, which means it's when x equals negative 1. And because that's just x plus 1 to the power of 1, that is an odd power. So the graph will in fact pass through negative 1 there. Let's look at our next factor, x minus 2. We want that equals 0, which gives x equals 2. And notice that that one there is an even power. So that means there will actually be a turning point on the graph at x equals 2. So let's do an approximate sketch to see what this looks like in practice. And y-intercept of 12, so we'll put 12 on the y-axis, looking at our 
scale for the rest of our graph, then we know we have an x-intercept of 2 and an x-intercept of negative 1. Now we know that the y-intercept is here and at the next time it cuts through the x-axis on this side is negative 1, so it must be going down like that. And because we saw that was an odd power, it must continue to just pass through negative 1. Whereas on this side, we saw that at x equals 2, we saw that there was an even power there, so that when we get to that intercept of x equals 2, it is in fact a turning point, so that rather than passing through the x-axis, the graph will basically bounce back up again there. So that would be an approximate sketch. And obviously we could go on to try to find out what other turning points on the graph are by using calculus or other methods, such as this one here. But this is just a bit of an initial idea to show you what the graph looks like based on the intercepts. So let's look at a second example. If we want to sketch the graph of y equals 2 times x plus 1 times x plus 5 times 2x minus 3. So here we can see the y intercept first of all. That's again going to be when x equals 0. So that will just become 2 times 1 times 5 times negative 3 giving us a value of negative 30. What about the x-intercepts? Well, to get those, we solve each of our factors equals 0. x plus 1 equals 0 gives x equals negative 1. x plus 5 equals 0 gives x equals negative 5. 2x minus 3 equals 0 gives x equal to 3 divided by 2, or 1.5. So let's set up our axes to draw those on, and then we'll look at how the graph is going to behave. So we saw y-intercept negative 30. That will be down here somewhere. And looking at our x-intercepts, We have an x-intercept at negative 5, another one at negative 1, and one at 3 divided by 2, which will be approximately there. Now in this case we saw that all of our factors were just to the power of 1, so they're all to odd powers. So in each case the graph will just pass through the x-axis at those factors. And we also know it passes through y equals negative 30. So again, let's start at that y-intercept to see where we're going. On this side, for instance, it will just go through there, through 3 on 2, and then continue upwards. On the other side here, it will pass through negative 1, and keep going, until eventually somewhere there will be a maximum, and again we could use calculus or other methods if we wanted to find that. Then it will pass through negative 5 and keep going. So this would be an approximate sketch of the graph in this case. Let's do one final example. Sketching the graph of y equals 4 times x minus 1 cubed. Same idea, y-intercept first of all is when x equals 0. That will give y equals 4 times 0 minus 1 cubed, giving negative 4. In this case, the only factor that we have here, which is cubed, is x minus 1. So x minus 1 is 0 gives x equals 1. So once again setting up a picture of our graph. Again I'll just do a fairly approximate sketch here. Now because power of 3 is an odd power that means that again the graph is just going to pass through 1 as opposed to being a turning point where it bounces back up there and we know it goes through negative 4, so clearly to start off with it is going to do something like this. But I've just rubbed that out and I'll draw it a little bit more neatly because since it's to the power of 3, what actually happens when it's a higher power than 1 and is odd, such as power of 3 or power of 5, is you actually get a point of inflection where the graph changes from concave 
down to concave up or from concave up to concave down. So you get these types of points here. And so having a look at that in this case, it means that it's going to be fairly steep here also because it's a cubic. It will flatten out a bit and it will then have that point of inflection so that the graph will have this approximate appearance. So these are several examples to help you see how you can do a quick sketch of a graph of a polynomial if you're able to factorise it into linear factors.